Boasting a long and rich tradition, baseball holds the distinction as St. Joseph's oldest sport, with the first recorded account of competition between the school and an outside institution coming in 1894. Played in Philadelphia's Fairmont Park, that contest against Roman Catholic High concluded in a 25-all tie. St. Joseph's would continue to field teams comprised of both high school and college-age students through the end of the 19th and into the first decade of the 20th century. College baseball um, was, was essentially a really, a really vibrant uh, part of the game at the time. Competing against mainly secondary schools in the Philadelphia area, these teams established the sport on campus. When official varsity competition debuted at the college in the 1909-1910 season, the members of the baseball team joined those from basketball and football as the first athletes to be awarded varsity letters. With the likes of Joe Raleigh, Ed Kelly, and Paul Heron taking the diamond, the baseball program had significant success during the program's early years. The most famous game of the era was played on April 10, 1912, against the defending world champion Philadelphia Athletics at Shibe Park. The team was on its way back from spring training uh, and uh, decided St. Joe's had done well that year um, playing the, uh, the previous year and so they decided to, to uh, play a game. Despite the A's being coached by the legendary Connie Mack, the Collegians prevailed in the exhibition game by a score of 8-7. to seven. The early years also proved notable for producing the school's first major leaguers. Al Travers, the student manager for the 1912 squad, became a footnote in baseball history for his lone professional appearance later that year. He tossed a complete game but allowed a league record 24 runs as a substitute pitcher for the Detroit Tigers in a 24-2 loss to the A's. Travers, who later became a Jesuit priest and went on to serve as dean at the college, was rounded up by Mack and paid $25 to fill in after the Tigers regulars refused to play in protest of the league suspending its superstar, Ty Cobb. Later that decade, the program sent its first player to the big leagues, Fritz Henrik. An outfielder for the college from 1916 to 1919, Henrik played one season with the Philadelphia Phillies in 1924. The 1920s would produce mixed results for the baseball program, and in the wake of the Great Depression and later World War II, the varsity program would go dormant for a span of 15 years from 1931 to 1945. Baseball returned to campus in the spring of 1946, calling Finnessy Field home. Vince Mallon, who played for the college in the mid-20s and later signed a pro contract with the Pittsburgh Pirates, served as coach. The revived program gained added credibility in 1948 with the appointment of former major leaguer Pep Young as head coach. Playing the majority of his nine-year career with the Detroit Tigers, the Philadelphia native brought a professional approach to the Hawks' dugout. He spent eight seasons as coach, guiding the team to a then-school record 11 wins in just his second season. Among the standouts for Young was pitcher Tom McHugh. McHugh arrived on Hawk Hill with a basketball scholarship, but wasted no time making his mark on the diamond, hurling a no-hitter as a freshman. He anchored the staff throughout the remainder of his career, captaining the squad as a senior in 1954. Another of Young's former Diamond standouts, future Basketball Hall of Famer Dr. Jack Ramsey, would succeed his mentor as coach in 1956. When Ramsey permanently turned his attention to the hardwood, his assistant coach, former Major Leaguer Al Brancato, was named his successor in 1959. Jack, Jack became the coach, and I got a little involved with him, come working out, because I was still playing. At that time. A Philadelphia native like Young, Brancato played parts of four seasons with the Athletics and was well respected in the local baseball community. His 1961 squad, which included future Mid-Atlantic Conference MVP Tom Wynn and fellow two-sports standout Harry Booth, 
became just the second team in school history to record double figures in victories. Perhaps more importantly, he laid the foundation for a golden era of Hawk baseball, which was about to dawn. A pair of NCAA tournament berths and Middle Atlantic Conference titles serve as the pinnacle of the modern era of Hawks baseball. But it was the hiring of Booth to lead the Hawks on the diamond in 1965, which launched the most successful run in program history. Captain of both the basketball and baseball teams as an undergraduate, Booth dramatically changed the fortunes of the Hawks, guiding the team to a school record 12-4-1 mark in his first season. Booth spent a decade in the college dugout, molding the Hawks into one of the top programs in the Mid-Atlantic region. He won a record 140 games and notched a 633 winning percentage during his 10-year run as head coach, during which he spent two seasons as co-head coach with Marty Pollock. His teams placed first or second in the MAC in each of his final five seasons, and he capped his career with league titles and NCAA appearances in 1971 and 1974. Any coach will always look back at the, uh, the ultimate success, and uh, we certainly had that in 1971 and 74, winning the conference and, uh, and going to the NCAA tournament. But also, uh, the first team I had uh, really provided the foundation for future success. Dave Landers was among the most decorated of a talented group of Hawks who developed and made their marks under Booth. The second team All-East selection, who was drafted by both the Chicago Cubs and the Pittsburgh Pirates before signing with the Phillies, captured Middle Atlantic Conference Most Valuable Player honors as a senior in 1971. The speedy outfielder, who finished his career as SJU's all-time hits leader and holds the program's career mark with a 393 batting average, also tossed a no-hitter during his standout career. Uh, David Landers, uh, a great leader, uh, and in my mind, to this day, the best hitter in the history of, of uh, St. Joe's. Among Booth's other notable players was Jerry Hunsicker. Hunsicker served as the Hawk assistant coach before going on to become one of the most respected executives in professional baseball, serving as general manager of both the New York Mets and Houston Astros. He is presently senior vice president of baseball operation for the Tampa Bay Rays. And did whatever you had to do uh, to be successful. Really good people skills, leadership skills, and uh, I'm certain in my mind that all of that wrapped together is why he was successful as a major league uh, general manager. The Hawks' run of success of the Diamond continued throughout the remainder of the decade under Barry Kirsch, who took the helm in 1975 and into the early 1980s under George Bennett. St. Joseph's changed home fields as well as conference affiliation. Despite the moves, the Hawks didn't skip a beat, notching seven second place league finishes and finishing lower than third just once during a 10-year span. SJU also produced its first All-American during that time, John Del Monte. The power-hitting outfielder captured first-team All-Conference honors three times during his standout career and was a fourth-round pick of the St. Louis Cardinals in 1979. He drove in a single-season record 45 runs as a junior, and his 12 homers as a junior still rank as the most in program history. The Hawks maintained their stature as one of the region's best programs during Bennett's tenure, finishing as league runner-up three times and posting a school record 26-1 mark in 1982. We hit 319 as a team uh, during that period of time, which is good in itself. Pitching-wise, it was just the opposite, many more strikeouts than walks, and that made for a very, very good team. Those guys really liked each other and that was a real good thing and it, they were just fun to be around. The coach also played a key role in recruiting the program's most accomplished professional player, Jamie Moyer. Among the most successful pitchers in Major League history, Moyer has won 258 games in a 23-year career, emerging as an all-star for the Seattle Mariners and later capturing a World Series title with the hometown Phillies in 2008. He has been recognized on numerous occasions by Major League Baseball for his philanthropy, 
and commitment to community service through the Moyer Foundation. The most dominant hurler in school history, Moyer set a team single season record which still stands with 90 strikeouts. He finished his Hawk career as SJU's all-time leader in victories and was tabbed by the Chicago Cubs in the sixth round of the 1984 Major League Draft. Jamie Moyer from Southergen, Pennsylvania. Has to be a nervous young man. He's 23 years of age, 6'1", 170 pounder. Went to St. Joe's in Philadelphia. The only player in program history to have his jersey number retired, Moyer and his wife Karen were the recipients of honorary doctorates from the university in 2009. To be returning to my teammates this evening as not only the oldest member of the Phillies, but the only one who can call himself a doctor. <laughs> Stability continued for the program when Chris Lociavo was named head coach. The former Hawk would match Booth with a 10-season run as manager from 1987 to 1996, racking up a school record 184 victories along the way. His teams always proved to be a tough out, and he guided the program to single-season records with 23 wins in 1991 and 25 in 1995. The program also continued to produce talented individual performers. Mike Migliarese became the program's second All-American, garnering third team honors in 1990. The two-time first team All-Atlantic 10 choice held virtually every offensive record in school history when he graduated and his 390 career batting average still ranks second. Uh, guys like Mike Miglaris, um, who was probably the most intense player that, uh, that ever played at St. Joe's, um, didn't like to lose, didn't like to fail. And uh, when Mike gave you that look, you knew that you better step it on. When Los Chiavo stepped down, he turned the reins of the program over to his longtime pitching coach, Jim Ertel. Despite working with hurlers, it was at the plate that his teams would make their mark during his eight seasons as coach. With Ertel at the helm, SJU would rewrite the record books, establishing new individual and team records in virtually every offensive category. Kevin Kirkby, a third-team All-American in 2001, was the catalyst for the team's attack and holds career records for games played, games started, hits, and runs scored, as well as single-season marks for hits, doubles, and runs. He also set single-season and career marks for saves. The consummate student-athlete, he was a two-time academic All-American, capturing first-team honors as a senior. Ertel was followed in the Hawk dugout by Sean Pender, a longtime Major League scout who placed a renewed emphasis on recruiting. He returned to the big leagues with the Cincinnati Reds after just three seasons on Hawk Hill, but his keen eye for talent played a critical role in landing a core of upperclassmen who comprised the current Hawk roster. Now with 100 years of Hawks baseball on the books, St. Joseph's heads into its second century under the direction of Fritz Hamburg. It's certainly a privilege to lead the Hawks into the next century. Um, with the rich tradition uh, of the baseball program here uh, by the players and coaches uh, that have come before us, we think it's very important uh, to make sure that the players that continue to wear the crimson and gray uh, have the, have the right work ethic, uh, that they're dedicated, uh, they're committed to team, and uh, we really want to make sure that uh, this program, with the commitment that's being put forth, uh, is moving in the right direction, not only on the field, but off. With a commitment to baseball that is stronger than ever, the next 100 seasons are certain to produce as many memorable moments and legendary players as the first.